Uh, welcome to Bariatric Surgery Seminar. My name is uh, Dr. Keir Chowda. I'm one of the fellowship trained bariatric surgeon here. Today we're going to learn about obesity, uh, obesity cause, uh, effect of obesity, learn the treatment of uh, weight issues, uh, medical and surgical, and we'll talk a lot more about surgery in detail, types of surgery, how it works, what are the complications, effect, benefit of the surgery. I am a, a master surgeon uh, for metabolic and bariatric surgery. That means uh, we follow certain standards, number of procedures, their outcomes. Hospital is also a center of excellence for uh, more than f four uh, insurance and other two other entity for uh, center of excellence for bariatric surgery. Not only the number of surgeries, as I said, but also the outcome and our facility is equipped to take care of the uh, bariatric patients in the operating room, in the ER, in imaging, uh, CT scanner and other stuff, and also on the floor. So what is obesity? It's a chronic life-threatening disease and few extra pounds on the body in terms of fat includes uh, uh, not just the weight issue, not just the social issue, but it also includes the serious health problem. Its medical, psychological, social impact is huge. Here we can see the obesity trends uh, in US. Uh, it is slowly getting worse and worse according to the 2014 data if you see. Uh, most of the state has more than 35% obesity rate. And similar trend in the kids also. In US now we have 93 million uh, adults affected with obesity. Around uh, 9 million adolescent or kids are also affected uh, with obesity. Particularly for kids, the 70% of the kids who have a childhood obesity are gonna continue to have uh, obesity in the adult life also. How do we measure the obesity? There are different scale. In a medical terms, we use body mass index. Uh, it's a basically a weight and a height ratio. Anything between 18 and 24 is a normal uh, weight. Between 25 and 30 is overweight. Anything above 30 uh, is obesity. Even in obesity, there are different grades. Uh, obese, morbidly obese, super obese, and as the BMI increase, so does the complication related to the medical condition increases. So what causes obesity? In terms of medical uh, uh, things, there are a lot of things plays in the role. Your genetics, your environment, your psychological, soci sociological uh, factors, uh, your hormone, male, female, there are a lot of factors. Uh, the science of obesity is not complete yet. There are still research going on towards the causes of obesity and then that's why it is, it is not the one simple thing and that's why the, the, the total problem of obesity is very complex uh, in terms of uh, finding the cure. But if we see the simplified, it is very simple thing, it's energy imbalance. The more energy we take and less we use, that extra energy, the extra calorie stored in the body as a fat. So in terms of we take a lot of, eat a lot of food, particularly junk food, and do the less exercise, the more obesity is gonna prevail. A Lot of things happen in our life. Most of the time now we have a lot of junk food around us. We supersize everything and most of the time it is the junk food that we supersize. On the other hand, a lot of invention happen in our life that meant to help us, but in a way they are hurting us. Most of our uh, job nowadays are no longer involved uh, intense physical activities. And people's attitude also change with the time and, and changing the environment. People use the escalator to go to the fitness center, or uses the automobile or the car to walk their dog, or even better, to have the another uh, facilities. But in all seriousness, this problem of getting a lot of calorie in and, and using very little, causing the problem more and more severe. When we have a weight issue or obesity, it doesn't come alone. It brings a lot of other medical problem. In fact, more than 30 medical problem happens because of the weight issue, like diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, sleep apnea, uh, acid reflux, incontinence. A lot of medical problem happens just because of having this issue. And some of these issues cause the disability and some are also uh, deadly, like a diabetes, uh, shortness of breath due to the uh, 
COPD or uh, sleep apnea, heart disease, certain <coughs> tumor or cancer also caused because of the obesity. Luckily, there are a lot of treatment available and basic is dietary therapy, physical uh, uh, therapy or physical activity, behavioral therapy uh, and most of the time the combination of first three, there are some medication available and surgery is also available. Quickly see the medication, there are few medication available uh, in the market, Xenical, Meridia, uh, Phentermine and there are certain few newer medication. However, this medication we first, we can't take it forever. So you can only take a short period of time, number one. Number two, even in those period of time, that efficacy or effectiveness is very limited and with the side effect. So we cannot depend on medication only for weight loss uh, uh, and particularly to sustain that weight loss. Five year results from all these different modality. It is difficult to lose weight, but the hardest part come and most of the people have a problem is to keep it off whether it's with diet, exercise, medication. The result I have shown with prescription medication for weight loss, almost 0% uh, patients will keep it off in five years. Diet and exercise is actually better. Two to 5% of people are gonna lose weight and keep it off uh, beyond five years or at the end of the five years. Bariatric surgery, however, gives you a long lasting result. 50 to 70% of people are gonna lose weight and keep it off over five years of period, which is a huge uh, change compared to the diet, exercise, or the medication. National Institute of Health in 1991 statement says the same thing, that bariatric surgery is effective for the long term for the most patient with uh, severe obesity. This is the triad pyramid of uh, obesity management. Diet and exercise remains the, uh, the base of any weight loss, whether we add the medication, whether we add surgery. Without diet and exercise, none of the modality works. However, the, uh, with the surgery and medication helps tremendously in doing the uh, weight loss, but diet and exercise is still very important part of it. So who is a candidate for surgery? Anybody with a BMI of 40 and a higher is a candidate or if you have other medical problem, issues related to the obesity as we have seen from the earlier list, then 35 and a higher obesity makes you a candidate uh, for a surgery. It's roughly around 80 to 100 extra pound makes you a candidate uh, for uh, surgery. It's a realistic option for uh, long lasting weight loss. It improves your uh, well-being, it improves the uh, medical problem related to the uh, obesity. Increase actually the lifespan. People live longer once you live, uh, once you lose weight. And for a lot of people, it improves the quality of the life uh, for them once they have a less weight, once they have a joint pain or uh, breathing gets much better after surgery. But bariatric surgery is just a tool. It requires a lot of involvement and discipline from your st a patient standpoint. It requires a healthier diet, physical activity, lifestyle modification. It also requires the constant medical monitoring. In a long run, it's every year we see the patient on a long run uh, for a physical examination uh, and also do a certain lab test, including the vitamin levels, nutrient level, and certain things also keep changing as we have discussed earlier, that the science of obesity weight is not complete yet. Things keep changing in the future. What is correct right now may not be in the few years after or vice versa. So once we see the patients on a regular basis, we can uh, determine all this detail uh, about the medical current therapies. And attending a support group is also very vital in order to lose weight and keep it off. Types of surgery, we do that. There are open surgeries. We used to do it on everybody uh, before uh, mid-90s. Afterward, surgeries have changed drastically, and so does the re results of all the surgeries. Big change, huge outcome is, uh, uh, change in terms of open surgery versus the laparoscopic surgery. It's the same surgery, laparoscopic surgery. However, with the very few small uh, incisions, and so does the, uh, the complications, pain, recovery is much, much better compared to the uh, open surgeries. As we can see here, this is the open uh, scar from uh, open gastric bypass surgeries. With this laparoscopic surgery, these are practically scar after six to eight weeks, not just 
cosmetically looks good, but also the, in terms of infection and complication rate is, is much better. Let's take a look at the types of bariatric surgery, how we do that. Earlier we have seen the report, results of diet and exercise. As we have discussed, it is difficult to lose weight, but to keep it off it is, it is most uh, difficult part. The reason is normal human stomach <clears throat> can hold, it's a stretchable, uh, it can hold one to one and a half liter inside. And the way it works in the body is that when we eat or drink, it goes in the stomach, stays in the stomach for 30 to 60 minutes. It stretches the stomach and then this, uh, there are hormone release and also uh, the nerve path send a signal to the body that it's full now so we don't feel hungry. However, doing the diet and exercise, eating small portion, they keep most of the people hungry. And that's why that's a, one of the major reasons people fail diet and exercise. With surgery, it takes care of that basic problem. With all the surgeries, and we'll see uh, in a minute in a detail, with surgery, we make the stomach very small, around four to five ounce capacity instead of one to one and a half liter. So when the patient get hungry after surgery, they eat small portion and they get full. And that's why the effect of the surgery, once you lose weight, you can keep it off for long lasting or uh, your lifelong, as long as you take care of it and follow the diet and exercise. There is other way to do uh, lose weight with surgery is malabsorptive or rerouting the intestine. When we eat, the food starts digesting right from the mouth, then it goes in the stomach, stomach acid starts breaking down the uh, food, then it goes into the small intestine where we have the pancreatic juice, bile from liver and other hormone from intestine. They all break down the uh, food and then it start absorbing. Uh, most of the food get absorbed in the small intestine, early part of the small intestine in the late. So with this surgery, we reroute the intestine. So when we eat food, it goes directly here into small intestine and all the digestive juice comes and mix with the food late in the intestine. So body does not have a time to break down all the uh, uh, food or calorie and absorb all the calorie. So this is the another way to lose uh, weight with the surgery. And then combine, that means making the stomach small and rerouting the intestine. We'll see that most common uh, types of surgery for this. Sleeve gastrectomy, where we take the probably around 80% of your stomach, resect that, leaving small size stomach, which is around four to six ounce capacity at a time. Two distinct advantage, one, we make the stomach small so a patient does not need to eat large quantity in order to get the feeling of fullness after <coughs> surgery. Also, there are hormonal advantage, certain hormone which is related to the obesity and the satiety, they get better. And that's why the results of sleeve gastrectomies are as good as a gastric bypass. Gastric bypass, which is another uh, commonly done surgery, where we divide the stomach to create the two portion, one small portion around four to five ounce and remaining stomach. Also, we reroute the intestine, take the intestine cut here and join them here, so that when the patient eats, first of all, they eat small portion. And the second thing, it also bypasses the uh, initial portion of the small intestine. So body does not absorb all the calorie. The surgery also very, works very well for uh, weight loss and also in terms of other medical problem. Adjustable gastric band. There is, as the name suggests, there is a, a silicone band they put in the upper portion of the stomach and it's uh, attached with the, with the tube to the port and you can make it bigger or smaller according to the patient's need. However, most of the people stop doing this procedure because of number one, uh, effectiveness is very low and the second thing, a lot of complications because of that. Let's see the results of these surgeries. How much weight we're gonna lose? With gastric band, around 40 to 50% of extra body weight you're gonna lose. With a gastric bypass and a sleeve, both gives you almost same weight loss, around 60 to 70% of extra body weight you're gonna lose. These surgeries 
are safer nowadays. The surgeries in fact are chances of dying from this gastric bypass or sleeve gastrectomy is less than uh, uh, from gallbladder surgery. The reason being the one number one that uh, surgeries are or bariatric surgeries are done laparoscopically. Second thing the surgeries are, are nowadays a lot faster than it used to be. Le sleeve gastrectomy takes around 45 to 50 minutes to perform the surgery. Gastric bypass takes around over an, uh, 15 minutes to over 30 minutes to perform the surgeries. So chances of something very bad happen with the surgeries are very low. It is still there but compared to any other surgeries is much better. Next thing we have seen earlier that when we have weight issue, a lot of other medical problem happens because of that. And once you have surgery, uh, any one of the, any of this uh, weight loss surgery, let's see what happened to this medical problem. This is gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy and this is banned. The type 2 diabetes resolved around 80 to 90 percent of time. High blood pressure resolves around 90% of time, cholesterol resolves 90 to 95% of time, obstructive sleep apnea resolves around 99% of time. Usually the diabetes resolves the fastest. Once you lose weight, we keep an eye on your blood sugar and give you as needed insulin or other medication. The rest of the stuff, blood pressure, cholesterol, sleep apnea and other stuff takes some time, at least six months to a year to resolve completely. They start getting better after surgery as you lose weight, but it takes some time to completely resolve. Other medical problem as we have seen, acid reflux, heart functions, arthritis, all other medical condition improves uh, or goes away with this one. That takes some time and depends upon the patient condition. But this is the real benefit of weight loss surgery for the people who have multiple medical problem to get rid of certain medical problem or gets better uh, after surgery once they lose weight. However, as with any other surgery, bariatric surgeries are also involved certain risk factor. Any surgery you do, even the smallest surgery under local anesthesia can have a complication either because of medication, because of surgery, patient response, <coughs> anything. With gastric bypass, immediate risk is bleeding, infection, obstruction, leak from bowel anastomosis or staple line where we join the intestine or here where we join two intestine, it can leak. Chances are very low, but it is still possible. We make sure during the surgery, after any surgery, gastric bypass, sleeve, or when we used to do the balloon, make sure immediately during the surgery that there is no leak or damage because if it is there, we can repair it, fix it right away during that during the surgery. We put a color solution, methylene blue solution after surgery when we take it out uh, uh, and make sure there is no leak. We also put the air and make sure there is no air leak from the staple line or anastomosis to see, as I said, if there is any issue, we can fix it right away. But it can still happen later on. Blood clot can happen in the leg and it can travel in the lung. It is getting better, chances are, are, are lower, but it is still possible. Chances are lower because surgeries, as I said, are shorter, uh, uh, surgeries are faster. Second thing, uh, we uh, ask our patient to ambulate after surgery, in afternoon of surgery or next day, up and walk around that decreases the chances of blood clot. We also give blood thinner uh, before surgery to minimize the uh, chance of having uh, blood clot. We put uh, SCDs or the pneumatic pump on their calf or leg to decrease the chance of uh, having the blood clot. It is still possible to have that in spite of all this measure. Long-term complication from gastric bypass, once we heal in a long run, certain complications still can happen. Ulcer can happen, particularly at this site and bleeding. And if there is an ulcer happens and it heals, and if this recurrent ulcer happens with the healing every time, it can cause the narrowing of that anastomosis or the junction over here and required further treatment. Malnutrition can happen uh, with this uh, uh, surgery, dumping syndrome, uh, which is uh, uh, taking a high calorie liquid or certain food. Uh, it can cause cramping, pain, uh, nausea, diarrhea, those uh, symptoms can happen. Vitamin deficiency can happen and as that can happen with any bariatric surgery. And iron deficiency anemia, particularly with this one, because since we are bypassing the 
first portion of the small intestine or duodenum, it, uh, iron uh, deficiency is more common over here. With sleeve gastrectomy, step line can leak, infection can happen, bleeding from any surgery sites can happen, stenosis or narrowing of this tube can happen and some digestion tissue uh, issues can happen after uh, surgery as with gastric bypass. However, the percentage of this complication and particularly the long-term complication are much lower and uh, that's the reason people are preferring more uh, sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, as per 2017 data, majority of the surgeries are done are uh, sleeve gastrectomies uh, in US. Gastric band, as we have seen, a lot of complication can happen. It can slip, it can erode or cut through the stomach wall. Infection can happen. These are one of the reasons uh, most of the people are not doing the gastric band at present. After surgery, usually the hospital stays one to two days in the hospital. Most of the people return to work within one to two weeks, as long as they are not lifting weight at uh, work. That's uh, uh, one of the major uh, restriction after surgery is no heavy weight lifting more than 10 pounds for six weeks. And usually follow up within one week of surgery, one month of surgery, and then every three months for one and a half year. And afterward, after that, every year uh, with your bariatric surgeon. We do certain labs every three months uh, for one and a half year and then every year when you uh, come for follow up. Uh, Usually we recommend walking for 15 to 20 minutes every two hours, high protein diet, multivitamin B12, uh, um, and we'll go over with all the stuff uh, before surgery and after surgery also. And you need to understand this is the lifelong commitment uh, that requires uh, certain things from the patient's sides as we have discussed earlier, the dietary measures, the uh, physical therapy, lifestyle modification, and so on. Next tech from here, you came for a seminar, you can come for as many a seminar you, uh, you want to before you get comfortable uh, and understand the, the details about all the surgeries. You can also uh, welcome to attend our uh, bariatric support group. It is our service uh, for the, anybody who have the bariatric surgery. We have a three support group in a month. You can come and join them. You can talk to the people who already have the surgeries and talk with them about various aspects of surgeries and their experience. Once we decide for, uh, to go for surgery, uh, you need to come and consult me in the office so we can start, uh, uh, start the process uh, for this uh, surgery. We do not charge any program fee for this. You also need to uh, uh, talk to your insurance. Pretty basic stuff, A, you have to talk to them, make sure you have a coverage for bariatric surgery, what type of bariatric surgery they cover, and most importantly, what are the requirements in terms of physician supervised weight loss program. Most of the insurance requires three to six months of medically supervised weight loss program, and we need to do that. You all have uh, insurance uh, uh, sheet or the uh, pamphlet in your uh, pocket, packet. Uh, it gives you a detail about uh, the insurance uh, requirements. And do your research uh, uh, in terms of uh, the surgery you want. Talk to your family, friends, colleagues who had the similar surgeries and, and, and find out their experience about those. Pre-surgery requirement, uh, anybody who wants to undergo surgery needs to have appropriate BMI and medical profile. If your insurance required, you need to undergo three to six months of physician supervised weight loss program. Certain medical testings, uh, pretty basic labs, EKG, X-ray chest, uh, psychological evaluation prior to undergoing any uh, bariatric surgery, and so does the dietitian, consultant clearances. Uh, this is the most important part of bariatric surgery, as I said uh, earlier. You still need to do diet and exercise after surgery. In fact, the, the, the weight loss still depends uh, on diet and exercise after surgery. A uh, lot of people fail to do that in a long run after surgery and, and they regain their weight or gain their weight after that. <coughs> so it helps you a lot in understanding uh, uh, the diet, particularly after surgery. 
we do need a medical clearance, usually it is by your primary physician, but if you also have other medical problem, we do need the clearance from uh, those uh, specialists uh, also. And you need to have a clear understanding of risk and benefit, only then you put your 100% heart into it and have an optimum result from the surgery. We do have a support group online uh, on the Facebook, you, uh, you have a packet. Uh, it gives you information about how to uh, enter those uh, uh, support group on those. Again, that is for everybody, particularly for the people who already have a surgery, they can talk to each other, uh, pass on the different information, suggestion, and other so forth. And if you have any question, you can ask now, you can ask also afterward. If you have any question, you can always uh, give us a call uh, in our clinic, talk to K and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much.